Hi and welcome to yet another episode of uh, RPS in the Learn Clang user group. Uh, it's our series that basically deals with implementing uh, rock, paper, scissors in our new favorite language, C. Uh, last episode, we have been finishing this first version of a fully functional RPS program and I tried hard to keep it readable as readable as C gets. I didn't do anything fancy. Fancy if you believe that pointers are fancy, which they of course not, it's just standard business. And today we have to tackle this. We have to understand what pointers are. We have to basically get our mental model about pointers right. Um, once you have mastered this, by the way, I think you have pretty much a great idea of C and you can write a lot of great things. Sure, there's this one and the other thing that you still want to learn, but pointers might be the, the, the most difficult thing for someone who is used to interpreted languages like Python. A uh, few of you know Python and I guess C is quite a different beast, but beasts are to be tamed and is what we are doing now. Pointers. That's the topic of, to, of today's episode. And I am just having a look through the code to look out for pointers. There are obvious pointers like these character pointers. My choices here, my results here are apparently all character pointers and arrays of these character pointers. So last time we kind of learned that a string in C obviously is um, typed character pointer for whichever reason we will probably deal with that uh, today just to learn what character pointers are um, but there are also some sort of implicit pointers that we probably want to have a look at right away in order to learn what pointers really are implicit pointers what is this a pointer that doesn't really show itself as a pointer at least not as obvious as these character pointer guys here um, Let's have a look. I give you a little hint by placing my cursor and selecting something. You guessed it. Arrays are in fact just pointers in disguise. And it makes total sense to be pointers in disguise. I mean, it's kind of syntactic sugar to write this. Um, and we are going to learn what this actually means. What does that mean and why is it a pointer in disguise? Uh, okay, maybe I have to, in order to understand this, we have to get an understanding on how the computer works. You probably heard the term before and I spare you all the boring parts, Turing machines, right? Computers are just Turing machines, which is kind of the generalized form of how uh, computers work. No matter if it's ARM or Qualcomm or wherever this, the thing runs, they all run by the same principle, which is the one of a Turing machine. And you know, to keep it short, and just to tell you how I think Turing machines are, Turing machines in my head, they're just um, basically uh, memory bands. Yeah, how to say that? A band of memory, right? And you can addre address these individual slots of memory and each of these slots can hold a certain amount of information. And um, the machine itself, it just reads and reads individual uh, or pieces of these slots and then maybe puts them into some registers which allows it to work with these pieces of information and it can do some operation on, these, on this data that it just read from the memory bank and then it will write the result back. And this is basically what a, what a Turing machine is and this is what our computers is, right? Everything is stored in memory in the form of bytes, right? The smallest uh, unit that we know is a byte. A byte is uh, eight bit and eight bits, well, each bit can just uh, have two possible values like zero and one, right? And uh, one byte has eight of these. And with eight bits, we have two to the power of eight possibilities that we can um, or possible values that such a byte can assume which is a total of 256 possible values um, an unsigned byte which is the same as unsigned char for instance 
um, has a value range of 0 to 255, right? Really, I don't want to bore you to death with that. I'm just kind of want to be sure that we are on, on, all on the same page here uh, and we know what a byte is because these bytes are kind of what we store in these memory banks. And the slots of, you know, each slot of, of, uh, of uh, a memory bank, um, the way I see it, of course, uh, can store an individual byte. And a byte has this value range. And um, we're going to have a look at this now and uh, really go step by step to understand how, how using such an implicit pointer really um, works for the computer. And from there, we can go ahead and understand why pointer arithmetic works um, and so on. So in order to make it a bit more, to visualize it a bit more, I mean, I've been talking a lot right now and uh, there was not much coding going on. Um, yeah, let's change this. I've prepared a little something that looks like this. It's a memory bank of a very small computer. It's a, it's a four bit computer. <laughs> and a four bit computer can address memory um, banks with ID, IDs valued to up to uh, 15, you know, two to the power of four, that's uh, two times two times two times two, which is 16. So 16 is the highest number a four bit computer uh, can address. That's all it, that's the highest number it knows. But it's, you know, uh, there is no four bit computer, I think, because it's a it's not really enough, it's not really useful. Um, but for our purposes, it is very useful because that's the entire memory bank of such a computer that we can basically visualize here. And um, just to show you what I mean here, the slot address is something we won't change. It's just the num number of the memory slot that we will be able to write. So memory slot zero um, is this one here. And if you wanted to, set it to some value, say five, then I would do it like this, right? And I will say, okay, slot zero has the value five now, whatever that means, we will get to that in a moment. So this is what we are going to work with. And uh, by the way, as a four bit machine can basically store half byte values, we're going to have a new data type, which is a half char, okay? And um, I'm starting. I'm starting with a variable definition here, uh, which is an array of half chars, which is very similar to our array of integers here. But we kind of change the data type a bit. All right. So I call it half char. It's a data type that doesn't really exist for obvious reason, but now it does exist. Um, how do I call it? I call it array A make it an array and I initialize it with um, character values. It's quite useful to know, by the way, that in C, uh, we can initialize individual characters, but using these single ticks. So if I want to store, yeah, it's kind of difficult to store anything in a 16 bit, uh, sorry, in a four bit uh, variable because ASCII, you know, if you look at the ASCII codes, I don't know, if I write a zero here, I think zero will be having a value above 16, so it can't really store it. But let's just assume we don't use ASCII here, we just use some other accounting. So zero really has the literal value, let's call it one. So one has literal value one, and uh, two has literal value two. Let's just assume it is like that. I'm making up my own rules here just to fit within my little four bit prison that I built for myself. I hope this leads anywhere, but I think so. All right, so that's the disguise pointer. And uh, the reason why I call it a disguise pointer is that for the computer, this variable A, it doesn't really hold these two values, but it holds the address of the memory slot with the first half byte, um, of the values that are stored in the array, right? So what does that mean? First of all, I want to put this data here into my memory bank. And yeah? let's just visualize this. Uh, how would that look like? I'm just picking some slots now that are free. Right now, my memory here, by the way, is initialized with zero all over the place. It's all uninitialized, it's all unused. And I'm just picking, picking two slots now that I like 
just randomly. So this one is uh, now representing the first member of my array, A, and slot number nine is going to represent my, my second one. So that's a nice property of arrays in C in general. They are consecutive. So once you have a pointer to uh, such an array, you know that all the members are following kind of in memory. They're not distributed all over the place, but they're nicely um, lined up one uh, after the other. And uh, that's very nice. You know, we have stored the value, but um, from the for the purpose of the program that we might be writing, we still we need a handle to this value, right? We need to know where in memory uh, our data is. And this is what A is. The value of A, let's just say that A in memory is stored in slot zero. I'm just choosing this because it's convenient, you know, I'm just making this up. And um, the value of this slot is the ID of the slot that the first member of that array, which is eight, right? So the value of A is eight. And that's already it. This, this is, you know, a pointer. What is a pointer? A pointer um, is the ID of the memory slot in my memory bank. That's all a pointer is. Really, there is nothing more. And uh, now we do, we, we do a little bit of work with our A array here, right? So let's try to access um, these, um, these values. And how, how would you do that, right? You access an array by indexing it. So A0, well, what does A0 really do? A0 is absolutely equivalent to A plus zero. Now we get into point arithmetic a bit, but we have to do this and you will understand what that means in a moment. So, uh, if you speak about pointers, then we also have to talk about dereferencing a pointer. And uh, how do we dereference a pointer? That's the asterisk here. That's the symbol for dereferencing a pointer. That's one way of doing it, right? And this is why I'm, why I'm doing it here. It makes uh, total sense to me. Um, if you dereference a pointer, you read the value the pointer points to. So this means that if I wanted to add an assertion here, well, let's just do it like, like this. Uh, this means that my, oh, how did, how did the C assertion work by the way? I think it's just this. This means that um, the entry at uh, member zero of the array is, this one, which is this character here. And this assertion will not fail, it is the case, because um, that is the same as, as I wrote before, uh, well, that's exactly equivalent. Uh, so what you can learn from this is that A is in fact just a pointer to the first member, um, basically to the first memory slot of my array. You know, this is the eight that we have here. And uh, whenever we dereference a pointer, which can be this form or this form, uh, all we do is read this memory slot here and then jump to the location that you have just read, which is eight and then return the value that you read at this memory location. This is what pointer dereferencing really means. And this is all. So uh, let's access the uh, second member here, which is at index one of my array. I mean, uh, arrays are zero based, right? You start counting at zero. So that is uh, slot zero of my array. That is slot one of my array. Which also means that these assertions are true. And I hope you know the concept of assert. So uh, assert means that this expression here needs to be true in order for the assertion, assertion to succeed. If that would be false, then your program would kind of signal that an assertion failed. It usually crashes, throws an exception, uh, whatever. 
and I'm using this as a means just to to show um, my assumptions here to keep track of them. So um, let's use the secondary form, which is a plus one is two, because all we say now is yeah. Let's see what we what we are saying now. Let's have a look at this one because that's kind of very explicit of what happens under the hood uh, with that form as well, right? It's the same thing. It's equivalent. Um, this is our first little tiny example of pointer arithmetic, right? We remember, I mean, maybe I shouldn't repeat this too often because you have realized this already, right? So if it's too, if I'm too easy on you, let me know and I will just jump forward and be really fast and make it difficult. But um, this points to the first uh, memory slot, to the first memory slot of our um, array, right? And what I'm saying is, to increment that pointer by one by the size of one member. This is what this means. This is really important to realize that this one doesn't mean one, increment by one memory slot, which is always one half char in our case, but to increment it by one um, member of the array, by the size of one member of the array. In our case, it's quite comfortable because uh, we are storing half chars here. So this one um, is exactly the size of one half char, right? So this is totally equivalent right now. Uh, so what it means is, in our case, uh, how do I write this? Um, this means basically read um, the value that you find in the memory slot zero, which is eight, then increment it by the size of one member, which is just one, because one the size of a uh, the size of a half char in this computer is one, um, which equals nine, and then uh, jump to that memory location and return the value there, right? So this is kind of equivalent. I mean, I'm I'm writing this maybe in a sub comment. Does a sub comment exist? Now it does. Uh, this is kind of equivalent from the from terms of computations, like read eight, increment by one, then jump to the memory location, and return that memory location for my program to use. This is what really happens here, and uh, you know that's already all there is about pointer arithmetic. Really, you can subtract pointers from each other. You can add pointers to each other. I mean, let's just say you can add, um, you can advance pointers by doing this pointer arithmetic, and that's really all there is. And we will go through the individual cases in a moment. But first, let's just uh, let's just make it a bit more difficult. Right? Let's just make. I mean, I can just leave this here for uh, reference, and we take our memory here and have another example further down. Um, yeah, the problem with this computer is, uh, well, there is no real problem. Let's forget forget the problem. Uh, there is no problem. <clears throat> uh, next thing, in A, we store integers. And let's just say that on this system, one integer, let's call it one and two, that on this system, one integer is four bytes. Mm -hmm. Uh, let's just see, do I have enough? Four bytes. So this means that wherever I jump to by dereferencing the pointer, um, this means that the next, f or that the four memory slots, the next four memory slots are my first member. And afterwards I have four memory slots of my second, of my second member. So um, to store these two values, I need eight half, or well, I've got half charts here, right? Let's just say an integer is, <laughs> is four half charts, okay? So it's basically two bytes in total, but let's just say it's four half charts because we work in half charts. We work in half bytes here. Uh, let's just do it like this. It's still the same thing. Uh, even the real computers, of course, use bytes. Okay. So we need eight bytes. One, two, half bytes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we kind of get to the limit of our memory bank here, but it shall be fine. All right. Uh, as I said, 
the race starts at 8 because we are good with that. But now, all of a sudden, one member, and I'm kind of using a trick here just to signal um, what, what this means, one member is now 4 bytes in size before the next member comes. And the value of this guy is 1. It's one integer. And the next member values 2. You know, this is how my memory layout looks like right now. This means that in terms of memory slots, I'm now, now using much more memory, right? Um, all of a sudden, one member has four memory slots, four half bytes, four half chars. I'm using this interchangeably, you know? I'm kind of changing names all the time, but you know by now that a half char is a half byte, right? It's the same thing. You know what a character is, you know what a byte is. Uh, so the next member also has four bytes, obviously, because there's no mixed types in C arrays. You know, every member in one of those arrays is always the same type. You know, not like in Python where you can store all kinds of objects in, a, in an array. No, no, and C is strongly typed. Uh, there's no changing your mind. You know, this is what it is, and this is what it stays for the runtime of the program, by the way. Uh, but that's a different thing. So do some. Let's do some point arithmetic. You know, let's get going here, and uh, let's uh, maybe increase the speed a bit. So let's just access our members here. Well, let's go to the. Let's access member. Yeah, let's access member zero. Let's just do it. Which is still the same thing. A plus zero equals uh, one. So that assertion is still true. But now the math underneath is kind of different because in order to read that one it will read eight then jump to the to memory slot eight but when you dereference the pointer because the type is now int the compiler knows to read four consecutive bytes and uh, return this as an integer you know we don't read one of these half bytes anymore Sorry, I'm constantly mixing up these words. I'm always saying byte when I want to say half byte. I'm confused myself because half bytes are so unusual. Um, but this is what happens. We read four in a row. We read basically the size of one member. And uh, if, you, if you would use the size of operator here, the size of uh, one member equals four. Yeah, whereas the size of one member here and this is valid C code, by the way, so that totally works. Ah, equals one in case of a half char. And now the whole point arithmetic thing comes into play and uh, is a bit more, I don't know, I don't want to say complicated, but you know, now we have to do some real math here. Awesome. So uh, the memory address that we are dereferencing is eight. Uh, go to eight, basically and read four. This is what this means. Read four uh, half bytes. All right. Now we get to the, now we reference the first member of the array. Look at this, you know, I'm still saying plus one because I'm, I'm saying plus the size of one member of the array. You know, this is what the one means. It's not bytes. If you, you know, this is the only thing really you have to totally get in your head. This mean, this is dependent on the type of the data that you store in the array. And that assertion still holds true. And what it means is, go to eight and add four and read four half bytes. So eight plus four is 12, right? Let's just write it here and read four half bytes from 12. Yeah. Go to eight and read four half bytes from, well, eight. This is how that works. And uh, surely, you know, the, the program doesn't really jump there. It's not like going to eight first and then it jumps to, to 12. No, no, it just pre-constitutes this, right? So go to, we could basically rewrite this. Go to eight plus four and 
read for. I think that's that makes more sense to what uh, that, that's more like what's really happening there. And that's already it. Really, that's that's all there there is to to point arithmetic and dereferencing of pointers. This also means that whenever you see these brackets here to indicate that there is an array of some sort, then uh, this is equivalent to a pointer to the first, I've, I've been saying this so many times, uh, I apologize, I apologize. It's equivalent to the first member, uh, sorry, to the first memory slot of the um, member, first member of the array. And I'm, I'm kind of having to, to remind myself that it's the first memory slot, right? So this, this A is pointing to memory slot eight. And then I know, okay, I've got the re to read the next four half bytes. Ah, there's a, so there's a very interesting question in the Twitch chat, which says, can you have a cert, uh, let's just write it, can you have this form as well? So instead of, uh, instead of writing plus zero all the time, can you also write this? Obviously, yes, because plus zero doesn't change the value. Uh, so that's exactly the same thing. You can also write this. So that's just dereference whatever there is at uh, that pointer. So that's awesome. You do this a lot, by the way. You know, that's kind of the, the actual form. I'm just writing it here like this in order to, you know, to make it look very similar to what's really happening there. But yes, that's exactly what happens. And this is what you do all the time, after all. That's a point of view reference. Um, all right, what's next? Maybe we have a look at the program again, because we know, and this, this is really just a rule you can remember, uh, which is interesting for, traver or for iterating these arrays, right? Um, whenever you see these records, what you really see is this, just at one pointer here. So uh, am I bullshitting you? Is this really compiling? Is this really working? I mean, I undo this for a moment and run my program so that you see, um, you know, that it runs. Okay, I'm running it with rock rock or something, so we tied. So does it still work if I, if I change it to that? I just rerun it, by the way. There, oh yeah, now, now it's rerunning it. So see this, still the same program. There's no difference, it's totally valid. It's the same thing after all. It's really, there's no difference. Just, just the way you write things. This usually looks more, you know, it's, it's easier to understand. The more, the more pointers you have, the more confusing things get, you know. I can confuse you a bit. Do you still know what that is? Does that actually make sense? I think it does make sense. I think it's valid C code, except for our argument type is <laughs> is different, so that program won't run in anymore. But you can go crazy with the amount of pointer dereferencing that you do. But we don't do that, of course, because usually you don't need that many. All right, uh, let's do some pointer. Let's let's do some iteration on pointers. All right. Uh, first of all, um, yeah, what do I want? Yeah, let's write a function that verifies the choices. And we pretend that choices are um, an array this time because, well, we don't pretend it, we just treat it as an array. So let's have a function. And this function is not nothing we really need. I just write it for the sake of it so that we do some pointer arithmetic here. Uh, some real one this time, not with our little computer here. We'll get back to this in a moment, but uh, for now we write a real function. All right, let's do verify some some function that verifies the choices. Verify choices. And um, what we hand over to it is, an, is a C array. And um, that's pretty much it for now. But we know that this C array is actually this, so we just use it that way, right? We know we can just interchange this, it's the same thing. And uh, for now, we just do it like this. Good, let's let's write a loop and just check if these choices are negative. We remember, uh, input ID returns a negative number if one of my choices is invalid. And then it checks for this right away. Um, 
Yeah, so this function doesn't really make much sense in, our, in the context of our program right now, but we'll make it work. All right, so let's iterate through our choices. So the first problem I have, by the way, I have no idea how big that array is, right? Because for C, remember, all we have here is a pointer to the first memory slot of the first member of my array. How do I know how many, how many slots are following? Is it two? Is it four? Is it whatever many? I have no idea. C has no idea even. C doesn't know anymore. This, this, you know, no one knows. So it's really important to pass the amount of uh, members that you have to check. And this is of course where lots of programming errors can happen by just reading over the memory that you're supposed that you have located for your actual array or even writing into that. That's how, how bugs happen. <laughs> That's uh, really all there is to it. So what we really need is a number here that um, says how big <laughs> How big the, the array is. I'm just using ints here just not to confuse you with anything. Int shall be fine, even though technically uh, indices to my array will never be negative, obviously, so I could use an unsigned int here, but just not to overcomplicate the reading here, we'll just keep it like this. So I declare it as constant because I am not going to change this. Also, I want to say that I'm not going to change the integers that I'm getting. It's a read-only uh, function, read-only. And I'm just signaling this. I've uh, mentioned this in the first episode. Const is important. Use it all the time to signal that you will not change uh, the stuff that you're getting because the compiler will basically warn you if you change it anyway, if you try to change it, which is usually a programming error of some sort. Next thing, let's iterate the array and now we see something very interesting but bear with me yeah so we don't have to initialize um, our loop here you know usually this is the part where we initialize our counter variables or anything like this but here we don't have to do it because we can just use C the C pointer and let's just do this so C should be smaller than C plus our size and we will go through what this really means in a moment. And then we increment C to go through it. And uh, just to finish this, finish this function, if we find something in here that is negative, then we just return false because that's, an, that's a value that indicates an invalid player choice and if we, we don't find anything wrong, return true and there we go. Now our function, uh, yeah, our function is, is ready and should be working. And just to show that it really should be working, you know what I do now is I don't check right away for the right choice, but I check afterwards, you know, so I'm kind of doing extra work here. Previously, I, I boarded as early as possible. Now I kind of do unnecessary work and abort uh, later just for the purpose of demonstration. So let's call our function here. Verify choices. We pass in the our pointer and uh, well, Kind of a misnomer here. Damn it! I can't select this. Um, let's just oh, find and replace. There we go. Um, our choices valid. Choices are valid. You know, finding good names for functions is always a tricky thing, even after ten years of experience. Um, good. If choices are valid, and if they're not valid, then we print something. So let's run this. Ha! Unknown type. Bool. You're right. So I'm having to include my std bool here, and now I should have this type. Oh yeah, and I'm calling it wrong. I have to tell it that I've got two choices here. 
So you know the size of game, I don't play it right now. I just hard code this because the size of stuff we did last time. And then we have this one, player choice, ha! Ha ha, which player choice is invalid? So let's return an integer then. Again, we want to know which one is invalid. And then we don't need bool anymore. Awesome. Ha, thank you very much. Because I want to, I just want to return the which player choice was, was invalid and the first one that is invalid we return. So uh, it's also interesting because we get into a new aspect of point arithmetic. Actually, we have to have to talk through this one first, but let's just make it a bit more interesting, shall we? So error is now negative one as usual. And now we have to return the um, actual index that the C is pointing at. And now we have a problem because we are changing the starting position of, <laughs> oh, actually this doesn't work here, by the way, this doesn't even work because I'm changing the starting position and kind of using it myself. So that will nicely go into an endless loop. <laughs> But uh, anyway, uh, I have to change the code now um, to get an iterator. So let's have an iterator that we initialize with the value of C. And then we compare that to one past the end of our array. And then we increment I and dereference I. And last but not least, we shall now be able to do some more point arithmetic to get back and find out the index of um, the item in the array that we've just been testing. So let's see if that, first let's see if that code works, right? Uh, oh yeah, now it wouldn't really work because now the retro type changed. If this is negative zero, Oh yeah, I have to keep the result as well. Let's see if that works, by the way. Can I, can I do this? Let's see if that works. And now I will use it. So rest plus one. Remember this arcs uh, is basically offset by one all the time and player choices is um, doing the same thing. You know, here we do minus one, so here we do have to do plus one in order to have a valid index in our, into our arcs array. So now we should have something equivalent. Use of undeclared identifier res. So that doesn't work. This, oh, by the way, probably that is invalid C code, but I try anyway, you know, just let, let, me, let me try this one. Okay, that doesn't work, fine. So we say res equals zero. And what we do now is we assign within, I mean, that's really bad, but I just show you because that is a valid thing in C and it's a source for lots of bugs. So within the if condition, we can assign variables and then use uh, that L value in our comparison. So that should do something. Okay. Uh, it does something. That's very that's very nice. Even though it does the wrong thing, I think. Um, because previously it said we tied and it should still be the same thing. So let's see see where the bug is. Um, how do I do this? How do I find out where my bug is and how do I do so fast? as fast as possible. I'm looking at it, I'm staring at the code. It still makes sense to me. Maybe, uh, well, that makes sense to me as well. Oh yeah. No. Oh yeah. Actually, I'm, I am wrong because I'm interpreting my return value incorrectly here because minus one now means success. Minus one is success. And a positive value is the failed player choice. Oh my God, I'm so, so dumb. Okay, so if that is greater than minus one, makes sense, huh? I don't wanna index an array with a negative number here. Uh, so that should actually do something. 
We tied, good, still the same thing. So let's just execute it with something invalid to see if it can really do this. So here's my RPS game. Rock, rock, that's the V-tied, rock, rocks. Player choice, rocks is invalid. Please choose one of rock, paper, scissors. So that does in fact work, which is awesome because now we can get in the last five minutes that we have, damn it, the time flies, doesn't it? Uh, we can get back to an in-depth discussion of all the point arithmetic that you will ever need in your life. This is really, this is it, this is it. And by the way, um, I make it even more interesting for you by doing this. Let's see if that works. Does it work? Does it still build? It does still build and work. Awesome. You know, because that's really what I want. Because I'm not going, I'm not going to change the C. Look at what happens. If I attempt to change C here, the compiler will bark. Read-only variable is not assignable. And uh, there we go. You know, and look at this now. I don't really want to run this program because it would crash. Uh, so I will just build it. So if I remove this now and build it, you know, there's no error. Look at this. Even though now I screw up my program totally. I mean, I'm incrementing both. Now I've got an endless loop here. This is clearly, you know, it's kind of a, a contrived, contrived, con you know what I want to say. It's kind of a made up example. But it really shows that I now have a bug in here that I can prevent by telling the compiler that I do not intend to increment my starting position of the array, of the pointer, you know. Now it barks. And th that's exactly what the compiler is there for. It doesn't only provide you with machine code uh, to run on your CPU in a super high speed. No, it also helps you to write decent code. And that's really, that's invaluable. All right, so three minutes left. I will, I will be quick here. I will try to be quick, really quick. Okay, so what we do is we have a pointer um, that points to any integer and we initialize it with the starting position of our array, right? Pointing to the first um, memory slot of the first member and blah, blah, you know, you know the drill. Okay, and then the next interesting part happen, happens. Now we compare our pointer to um, some other pointer. And this is the pointer arithmetic going on here. Uh, let's go back down here um, just to see, you know, let's, let's make a new, let's make a new half char pointer, which I call E, which points to the end of my, um, or one past the end of my array. And I initialize it with A plus two. And where does that guy point to now? Well, it points to eight plus two. That's the memory slot that it's pointing, which is, let's do the math, 10, right? And in a for loop, what has happening is, we compare pointers now. Remember, we had this, we had this um, half char i equals a, and then we say um, i smaller than e. While i smaller than e, do the loop, and then we increment i. Sorry, e is the German for i. So the German part in me kind of took over for a moment. I'm sorry. Gonna rule the world. That was the German part once again. I'm sorry, once again. So this loop basically means, or that comparison basically means, you know, in the first iteration, in the first iteration, i is eight and eight is smaller than 10. In the second iteration, i is nine and nine is smaller than 10. And then we increment once again, and then we have 10 is smaller than 10, that is false. So the loop will abort, the loop will stop here. And this is, this is what happens here, right? We compare the pointer values, we compare um, basically the memory slots themselves. We don't dereference this pointer, we don't do this for good reason, right? We wanna compare um, the memory slots themselves. And that's really it. Uh, those who are 
well, we, we can actually look at this thing here because that's a very interesting thing that can in fact happen. You know, let's do, I mean, let's do this. Just, just, I mean, I think in reality, this doesn't ever happen, but in this machine, it can happen. And then I'm kind of, I'm out of time already, but let's just do this. And uh, let's take five minutes more just to uh, do the subtraction of pointers uh, that we have above and then we, are, then we are through with it. All right, so let's do this one more time. We have um, in pointer E equals A plus two. So the value in here is now eight plus two times four, which is 16. And we know that 16 is not a valid four bit number, right? And this pointer is four bit in size. So what happens? We have an overflow. So in this case, my E is basically 15 plus one, which becomes zero. Right? So we have an overflow here. The variable of or the value got too large and we can't actually represent this with a four bit number. So now my E is, <laughs> now my E is zero, even though I expect it to be 16, which doesn't work here. And then I do this thing again. And what happens is, well, it's kind of the same code. I could just copy, copy paste it. What happens is in iteration one, we compare eight is smaller than zero, which is false, loop aboard. So this loop doesn't even run. Um, in theory, this, I mean, in theory, I don't know even if it's a theory, whether it's theory or not, possibly this can happen on a 32-bit or 64-bit machine, right? Who tells you where the, the memory is that you are seeing there? This can possibly happen, but I claim that this will never happen in a real machine because, you know, uh, today's operating systems, they're virtual memory systems, which basically means that each process has its own virtual address space, which basically means that it can uh, address the entire range of 32-bit or 64-bit value, 64-bit uh, memory slots. It can, it has everything for itself. It's in virtual isolation. And I think every, Every compiler in this world will make sure that um, the memory you get will not be at the very end of this address space. No, it will not be. So don't don't worry. Don't worry about that ever, that this happens. This is really just an interesting thing that happens in our case. Uh, that's just how it is. Okay, now last thing for today. Let's have a look at this subtraction here. We, we have seen additions, right? And uh, now we see subtraction. Uh, what does a subtraction mean? So um, let's just assume, or oh, let's just start here. Let's just say that we are in this piece of iteration and now we return. And what we return is this, um, is this i minus a this is what we return and what are the values behind that you know we are comp uh, we are subtracting pointer values now what this means is really that we subtract 9 minus 8 you know and not to forget we are still measuring whole member sizes here so this 9 minus 8 it's measuring half charts i'm comparing memory slots here i'm always comparing memory slots but before returning the actual result, we divide it by the size of one member of my array or one member of the thing that my pointer points to, which is one. So here, uh, this would equal one. So as this is the first iteration, uh, not the first, the second iteration, second loop, uh, what happens is that um, we return one, which is the, the index that we are at right now. So if you do this here, one minus a, which is eight minus eight by one equals zero. And this perfectly matches the uh, member index of our array, which is, as we remember, this thing, which is that thing, it's all the same. I'm not going to repeat this, um, but I'm going to show you what it means down here. That's, that looks a bit messy, doesn't it? 
Um, I think mainly because of this thing. Let's just assume this is 16. Let's assume this is 16 so that we can have something useful here and then we we go through and say i minus a and uh, actually let's not use this one let's use the second one which is then 12 smaller than 16 still true and i would just want to return here and say i minus a which equals 12 minus 8 which is 4 by size of one member 4 equals 1 isn't that awesome so we still get the right index and I can tell you blah 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 here it would be 0 it would be the same thing same thing as above but our member size changed and this is all there is to know about pointers and pointer arithmetic that's that tell me about my word one of my last words today okay there have been no no additional questions in the chat so i assume you have understood how that works i recommend you to try that out i'm going to to leave all this stuff in this file and upload it to github i thank you all for watching for bearing with me i hope you liked it and i see you next time when we will learn something about complex data structures, data structures in general, maybe a bit of dynamic memory allocation. We'll use lots of pointers and to reference them. I promise you that. And um, that's it for now. Have a good evening.